John 6 and 26. If you have it, indicate by shouting amen. If you could just help me, give me a little bit more just here. I don't know how many separate monitor mixes you have, but if I could have more here. It reads as follows. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, for that meat which, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do? What shall we do that we might work the works of God? interesting response they said what shall we do that we might work the works of God and Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent wow. Matthew the 16th chapter and the fifth verse and when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we have taken no bread? When, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up how is it that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees and the people of God said amen I want to call your attention to the 26th verse of the 6th chapter and the 6th and the 9th verse of the 16th chapter verily verily I say unto you ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles but because ye did eat the loaves and were filled do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Would you grab your neighbor by the hand and repeat these words in the form of an admonishment and an, and an encouragement? Ask them, say, remember how it happened. Yes, remember how it happened. Remember how it happened. He's a mighty God, and he's worthy to be praised. Now, God is different from man. As a matter of fact, when he describes himself, he says, your ways are not like my ways. Your thoughts aren't even like my thoughts as a matter of fact as far as the earth is from the heaven that's how far your thoughts are away from me you, you don't think like me you don't behave like me so when we try to compare God to ourselves especially the unregenerated mind the unregenerated soul uh, we have a difficult time because God does things seemingly diametrically opposed to the way we would do them he asks that we do things that really sometimes go against our nature he asks us to do things that that uh, if you really looked at the circumstance you would do it differently and so one of the things I like about God is that he allows people to find their reason for following him uh, 
it, it, would be, it would be nice to believe that everyone that comes to church has the same intent or the same reason. But the truth of the matter is, uh, people come to church for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, people, everybody don't have heaven in mind. Uh, some people have other things on their minds. Uh, people, people come to church because of selfish motives. I can't get no help here now, but I, I'll, I'll preach till I catch up with you. Um, pe people come to church with selfish motives. Um, let, let me prove my point. It, it, you, you're, you're, not, you're not here because uh, you love God that much. Okay. Yeah, you, know, you come when you feel like coming. Bishop, is it okay for me to preach like this? Hmm? Uh, you come when, it's, when you got a ride. You come when you got a new outfit. You, you come when special people are going to come or when you want to be seen. You know we do that. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You come when you're hurting. You come when, when, you, when you have a need. You come when something's being given out. And, and, and it's okay. I know, I know I didn't get too many amens because we don't like the truth when it hits us right in the face. But what I'm here to tell you is that Jesus says it's okay. You come because you saw a cute sister. You come because you heard there was a few good men. I don't know why I can't get no help here tonight, but I, I'll get there in a minute. You know, you know that's why you came to church, because you worked on the job with somebody that you thought was cute, and she said, you got to come to church, and you showed up. And I want you to understand that it's okay. Just touch your name and say, it's, it's okay, it's all right, it's all right. Whatever reason got you here, it's okay. What I love about God is that he will work with what you give him to work with. We're here, basically, I mean, we, 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 we got here because we had a need and we heard that Jesus could meet that need. Yeah, I'm telling you. We, we didn't come in here because you, we just had such an overbearing love of God that we just loved him so. Well, something was wrong with us. And we were hurting. We, we had habits we couldn't break. We had debt we couldn't get out of. We, we had problems. We had troubles. And we heard that Jesus was the answer. And so we showed up, not because we loved him, but we discovered that he could help us out. Are, are, are you getting where I'm going with it? We came to him because of selfish motives. We, we came to him because we wanted him to fix something. We didn't have the money, the inclination, or we didn't have whatever resources necessary to fix it, and we heard that he did it for no charge. Now, you know that'll get you here. That's how come your house messed up, because you let somebody try to fix it that didn't charm. <laughs> work on your car. Well, I got an uncle, Uncle Lukey, work on car. Can't he fix that? And your car ain't ran right since. And the reason he got under that hood 
because he didn't charge. I wish I had somebody to talk back to me. I, I'm, I'm halfway through, really. We heard that he, he could fix it for us and wouldn't charge us nothing. And so we came. Came because at the very least, we would hear a good sermon. It was worth a try. My emphasis is that he didn't care that you came because of selfish motives. It only mattered that you came. The first thing we need to understand is that the the reason I read both passages is because they are the narratives of two separate instances uh, where Jesus took bread and fish and fed thousands. And the first time he did 4,000 uh, 4, men, not counting women and children, and he had seven baskets left over. He did it again uh, where he, had, he fed over 5,000 men, uh, not counting women and children, and he had 12 baskets left over. And, and in both cases, in both cases, they came to Jesus both to hear what he would say and to see what he would do. In both cases, they followed Jesus, and the Bible says that they brought those that were sick, those that were diseased, those that were blind, maimed, halt. And in the passage in Matthew, it says that they threw them at the feet of Jesus. The, the, the imagery that the, the writer gives us is that it, it seems as if it was a, a dare. Jesus, what can you do with this? And in Matthew, the 15th chapter, it says that they followed him for three days. And everyone that they brought to Jesus, he healed them. I'm so glad that he doesn't disappoint us even when we don't understand him, even when our motives are suspect, he still deals with what is faced with him because it takes a certain amount of faith to bring that problem to Jesus. Hmm. And so, I, I'm going to preach in a moment, and, and so it is that everyone that was brought to Jesus, he healed. They came to hear him speak, but right before he performed the miracles of the loaves and the fish, he sat down and began to teach. A lot of people will hang out as long as you entertain, but the moment you begin to teach, you lose the crowd. Jesus was pretty long-winded. And so they knew if you're going to hear Jesus, you better bring a lunch. But some of these people had been there for so long that they had eaten whatever they had brought. And it was because he was teaching. Now, I want you to understand that where there is no word, there can be no faith. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Our faith is not wishful thinking. It is not mind over matter. It is not positive mental outlook. Faith is the word of God. And that's the reason he said, what shall we say? Shall one ascend into heaven as to bring God down? Or shall one descend in the earth that shall bring God up? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus with thy mouth and believe in thine 
heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. But how can we hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Ah, I want you to understand that God has never changed his methodology. I want you to know that God still moves in the same way he's always moved. God sends his word first and it is up to you to believe what God has said. That is the reason that the devil fights the word. That is the reason the devil fights the preacher because God has interrupted the preacher's life and anointed him and put his word in his mouth and he must stand as the oracle of God. That's the reason I tell people something is wrong with you if you allow people to talk about your preacher. Lean at somebody and tell them don't talk about my preacher. Uh -huh. You can talk about the mayor, you can talk about the governor, you can even take shots at Clinton, but don't talk about my preacher because I've got to see him as the man of God my life is hanging on what he's preaching God has put a word in his mouth I can't get no help here God has put a word in his mouth for me and I can't allow what you say to stop me from receiving because you think you buddy buddy I don't care the problem if you read the gospel according to Mark the sixth chapter you will discover this that Jesus went home and carried his disciples with him and when he got there he went to the synagogue sat in the seat of authority and began to teach the folk in the neighborhood said who is this and who gave this man this authority somebody said ain't that Jesus isn't he the son of Joseph don't we know his brothers and sisters aren't his mother and family with him? who told him to do all of this and the Bible says something very interesting it says that Jesus could not do many miracles he didn't say he would not he said he couldn't and the reason he couldn't is because they couldn't see him as the Messiah they could not see him as the anointed one and the reason they couldn't see him as that is because they grew up with him and they were the Bible says this it said they were offended that he would take the seat that he sat in uh, I want you to understand that folk that don't see you as God sees you will not be able to benefit what from what God has put in you and that's the reason he said that a prophet is not without honor except in his own country among his own people you have to understand that I don't care if you went to school with him I don't care if you played marbles with him you've got to see that man of God as a man of God you can't see him as the, your old buddy because God has transformed him and taken him through the process of osmosis he might have went in a caterpillar but he came out a bishop I want you to understand that you really don't know him except you see God through him I need somebody to give him praise I'm just about through. He set them down and he taught them. Hmm. Then he said, I will have compassion on them and I will not send them away hungry. The disciples said, we don't have enough money in the bank to cater this event. Church folk can eat if they can't do nothing. He said, well, what do you have? He said, well, you just got a few fish, a couple of fish, a few loaves. And Jesus took it, break it, blessed it, and distributed it. And then the first instance, they received seven baskets full. In the second, they took a boy's lunch and distributed and received 12 baskets. In the gospel according to St. John, John gives the instance of the 5,000 being fed. And the people were so impressed with what Jesus had done until they just, it was unanimous they were going to make him their king. See, if you give stuff away, people will promote you. <laughs> Bishop, am I telling any truth here? They were going to make him king. Just a, a free lunch. Just... 
and and so Jesus said this isn't this isn't for me and so he withdrew himself went into the mountain sent the disciples off on a, the boat you understand that's sister Armstrong was talking about peace be still he walked across the waters and the night watch and, and so the people got up the next day looking for Jesus they got up looking for him and they couldn't find him well they knew the last ferry went out the disciples was on it but he wasn't and they couldn't understand they knew he had to be in their coast but he walked across the water and when they discovered that he wasn't in any of their coasts, they got on a boat rented a boat went across the water looking for Jesus then they found him and Jesus looked at him and said you didn't come to me because of the miracle now that 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 used to bother me, you know. And, and I, I thought that it was something wrong if you came to Jesus because of a miracle. But then I discovered that he was a miracle working God. And that it would, it would have been against his nature if, if you didn't love him for what he did. You know, if, 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 if you marry someone because, you know, what got your attention was the way she looked, nothing wrong with that. I didn't get an amen. I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> he ought to be attractive. She ought to be attractive to you. Now you sitting next to your wife. You ought to say amen, Reverend. All right. And to act as if you don't like the individual simply because of who they are is deceiving because what they do uh, is, is, is greatly involved in who they are. So to say that you don't come to Jesus because of what he can do for you would be a lie, really. Because you don't, you don't need a God that can't help you out. As the sisters say, I can do bad by myself. See, you don't need, you don't need a God that, you, you, you understand. Uh, so, it's okay if we love him because of all of the wonderful things he can do for us. And so Jesus was not against them coming to him because of what he did. But what he's saying here is you came to me because you ate and were filled. In other words, the only reason you're here is because you were satisfied. You had total disregard for how it happened. You had no respect or no reverence for how it came about. You are just here because you were satisfied. Now, the motive is all wrong. Because what you're saying is, give me what I want and I'm gone. I don't care what you had to do to get my need met, just meet it so I can leave. And I will follow you as long as you satisfy my passion. If you give me 10 minutes, I'll be finished. But when you first came, you had a need. I met the need and that was perfectly fine with me. But now you're just coming because you want to be thrilled. 
You want to be satisfied. You want your physiological need met. Mm. You don't have anything to do with the, the hurting, the, the, the giving up, the mental or psychological aspect of the individual. You just want your flesh satisfied. Now, I, I'm going to bypass a whole lot of things and simply say this, that familiarity breeds contempt. That you can hang around somebody that does so much for you until you lose the respect for them because you just expect them to do what you want them to do. People will support you as long as they can control you. But I want you to know that the warning that God gives to us tonight is one that we must respect what he's done and not only what he's done but how he did it it is the way that god does what he does that causes us to worship him suddenly there were thousands others thousands of other people that ate and were filled that day. There were thousands of others in Jerusalem and Tiberias and Galilee that ate that were not present on the mount when Jesus made them sit down and fed them. And one might say, well, if you go to work and if you put in a good day's wage or good day's work, you'll have a good day's wage and you go out and you buy groceries and you just do what is normal, what happens in the, the law of reciprocity. You do what, 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 if you sow, you reap, what's the big deal? But Jesus said, the big deal was not the fact that you ate and were filled because this was not the first day these people had eaten till they were filled. The big deal is not that you have a big car. The big deal is not that you have a beautiful home. The big deal is not that you have a wonderful edifice, but the deal is how you achieved what you got. That is where the miracle comes into play. See, because it wasn't the fact that he fed them, it was the fact that he fed them with very little. It was the fact that he took nothing and made something out of it. It was the fact that he took a minuscule meal and satisfied the hunger of all of those folk that were around him. What Jesus is saying to these people is, don't come to me because you want to be filled. Come to me because you have respect as to the way I filled you. Don't just come because you have a fancy that you want to be satisfied. Come because you reverence what I do. Come because you know that if it had not been for God who was on your side, come because you know it took a miracle to get what you have. God just didn't bless you through conventional means, but in spite of you, how many folk do I have in here today that know I don't deserve what I got, but I got it because God worked a miracle on my behalf. Lean on somebody and tell them, remember how it happened. Don't just act like you've always been wonderful. Don't sit up in here like you've always known God. Remember when your family gave up on you. Remember when your friends gave up on you. Remember when you gave up on yourself and somebody told you about Jesus. And regardless to how low you were, God picked you up and brought you here. Look at somebody and tell them, remember, remember, remember how it happened. People look at church folk now and we have the audacity to act as if we've always been this way. We come to church with our nose in the air, acting like we sin proof and devil proof. But I remember when God had to do stuff for me. He told 
told the disciples, and I'm closing, don't come in here with the leaven of the Pharisees. They begin to reason among themselves. What? We don't have any bread as he fussed us out because we didn't bring bread. Jesus said, listen, don't start that. You ought to remember how I made a way out of no way. You ought to remember how I took very little and gave out very much. I want you to understand that miracles are not over. Miracles should not be passe. But God wants the people of God to live in a state of the miraculous. God doesn't want us to feel like we got to do it like Joe Doe or John Doe or Jane Doe. But God wants us to understand that when we're his people, he takes joy in working a miracle for his folk. What God doesn't want us to do is to pretend as if we are common folk and begin to behave like common folk. I wish I had time to preach to you tonight, but I'm going to give you the cliff notes. I want you to understand that when God got angry at the children of Israel, it was because they looked at other nations and they desired to be like them. Now, God had brought them out of Egypt with a mighty outstretched hand, led them by a pillar of cloud in the day, fire by night, caused the Red Sea to congeal and stand upon both sides, let them walk through and not even get their feet muddy, caused them to walk through the wilderness 40 years and their clothes never wore out, let them eat and they never planted a farm, let them cross rivers without a boat and then they get on the other side take lands that they have no deed to but God drove out the Philistines God drove out the Jebusites God drove out the Perizzites God drove out the Hittites and said it's yours and then one day he stepped back and said ask from one side of heaven to the next and see if anybody has heard the voice of God I did things for you that I haven't done for anyone since I said let there be light and I didn't do it because you were the greatest as a matter of fact you were the least but I set my love upon you and it makes no sense why God would be as good to us as he has been it's out of his own benevolence that he has blessed us and then the children of Israel had the unmitigated goal to look at nations round about them and say we want to be like this they told Samuel give us a king because we want to behave like everybody else total disregard for how God brought them total disregard for how God promoted them total disregard for how God gave them things that they did not deserve but what I love about God is that God will satisfy you oh bless the name of the Lord he gave them Saul but Saul as a result of hanging out with people forgot God and forgot how he got what he got. You will remember that he hung out in caves hiding from himself because the prophet Samuel had told him that God had called him. But we find after a few years of sitting on the throne, he had total disregard for how it happened. And one day they were waiting on Samuel to show up and the king usurped his authority and thought it was okay for him to take the place of Samuel. And when Samuel got there, Saul was already moving into the role of the priest. Samuel said, man, you should not have done this because you have not regarded God because you did not honor God. God has taken the kingdom from you and he's given it to another man. Now, you'll have to read your Bible on your own. But that other man's name was David. And people might say from the outside that Saul was not as nearly as bad as David was. We never read where Saul ever took another man's wife and committed adultery. We never read where Saul caused that same man to be killed on the front line. But what we do understand is that David never forgot how it happened. <laughs> 
Lean on somebody and tell them you need to remember. Uh, uh, David uh, never forgot uh, how he got uh, from where he was. Uh, he was the most uh, unlikely to succeed. Uh, he wasn't as big as his brothers. Uh, as a matter of fact, they gave him uh, the menial duties. Uh, his father was not known uh, as a great ranch herder, uh, but he just had a few sheep. Uh, David had the task uh, of keeping those sheep. Uh, but when David uh, moved from the shepherd's field uh, into the palace, uh, he never forgot uh, how he got here. Uh, it seemed uh, like it was just a coincidence. Uh, but what I found out uh, is that God will have you uh, at the right place uh, at the right time uh, to meet the right person uh, to get the right blessing. Uh, uh, yes, I need somebody to give them praise here. Yeah. Say yes. Yes. David uh, ran in the trouble. Uh, he had a lot of breakdown. Uh, he had moral failure. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, he had family trouble. Uh, he was run out of his own kingdom. Uh, but he never uh, forgot uh, how he got there in the first place. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, he said, if it uh, had not been for the Lord uh, who was on my side, uh, surely I would have been consumed. Uh, uh, yes, I want you to understand something uh, that you're not here uh, because you deserve to be here. Uh, you're not here uh, because your enemy's not trying to get you, uh, but God uh, has protected you. Uh, he covered you uh, when you should have been exposed. Uh, David said, I know that's right. Uh, and he got out his pen. Uh, he said, my tongue uh, is the pen of a ready right every time you talk to me I'm ready to tell you about the goodness of God somebody said David what is the secret of your success he said let me tell you blessed is the man that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of God and in his law does he meditate day and night he shall be like a tree by the river of the water say yeah say yes yes David, how have you lasted so long? How I've seen people come up when you came up and they're not here. David said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall Shall. Oh. Everybody stand to your feet. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 The saints used to sing a song I never shall forget the day when Jesus washed my sins away I can't forget it yeah yes I can't forget it yeah yeah I need somebody that can remember how it happened uh, to find you five people uh, shake their hands uh, and tell them I can't forget it I can't
feel a dance coming up. Yes! Ah, yeah! The Lord has blessed me. I've traveled all over the world. I've been on television and everywhere else. I've won several Grammys, Stellas, Essence, Double Wars, but I can't tell you that I'm here because I'm better than somebody or could sing better or could play better or could write better or can preach better because that's not the truth. A whole lot of people can do what I'm doing better than me, but I can't forget a little black boy in the projects of Detroit. Sometimes we get You gonna start acting cool and become sophisticated. I got news. I can't because every time I think of where it brought me from, I lose it again. Yeah, I need somebody that will just remember how it happened to clap those hands and give them praise. Come on, do you really remember? Yes, shut up, Sita. Escotorobosi, Escoto, Uranda Lobosia. It took a miracle. I'm certain that if we would go down to City Hall, we would find in the city planning plans for them to build and I don't know what this building costs and it isn't my business but I can just tell you I know it's in the millions but if you were to go down to City Hall you would see plans for buildings that cost double triple what this building would cost it isn't just the fact that a building exists on G.E. Patterson Boulevard. But it's how it happened. Oh, I need somebody to hear what I'm telling you. Hey, God, the it's how it happened is that a man heard from God and dared to preach a whole lot of preachers a whole lot of preachers but do they really believe what they preach how it happened I think the smallest this church has ever been, 400 people, somewhere around there. But it took 400 to build a place that seats 5,000, two churches, radio stations, you name it. A lot of radio stations, but it's how it happened. It's 
sana. That God would take the underprivileged, the undereducated, the underfunded, the disenfranchised, those who've been passed up, looked over, walked past. It's how it happened. So when you walk into the Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, Cathedral of the Bountiful Blessings Ministry, you don't just say, oh, that's a nice chandelier, nice lights. Oh, look at the carpet. When you walk in, you should walk in with reverence. Look at it. Look at what God has done. That he took you and you and you and you and you and look what he did with us look what he brought us when you receive and i i i i folk if you know me at all when god tells me something i simply say what god has said and 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 and, and i have no absolutely no problem but some of you are going to receive promotions and, and even promotions some of you uh, are going to receive promotions that you you looked for but some of you are going to receive promotions that you didn't expect and and when they come hear what i'm telling you you, you can tell bishop patterson and I, I know i'm right when they come they're going to tell you it was because of your your work ethic it was because of you know your faithfulness and diligence on the job but god is saying that's not it it's a miracle and when they come to you, now notice, and, and I, did, I didn't get to it on purpose because I want to let you go, and I'm going to do that now. But notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, when they asked him, how can we work the works of God? Jesus didn't say, go on a 40-day fast. He didn't say, stay shut in for two weeks. Now, I do all that. I fast. Shut in, do all that, because we need it. That, that's how I got here. But I want you to understand something. He said, if you want to work the works of God, I know there's some preachers here, and you need to hear this. If you're going to work the works of God, you have to believe on whom the Lord has sent. Now, that, that's simple. That's a mouthful. I remember in our church when we first started we didn't have enough money to buy a used van I, I take that back we had enough money to buy a used van we didn't have credit to buy a used van and the bank wouldn't loan us any money because we were just starting now they I can't stop them from calling Pastor Winans, you need three million dollars? I just make them take me to lunch. <laughs> Bishop, no, they just come. Well, if, if you ever need anything, here, they just give you money. Would y'all stop coming? We don't need money. We, they were mad because we, we borrowed like two million or something to get the place where we are now. And we told them, well, we're going to pay this off. They said, no, don't pay it off. But we're going to pay it off this year. The Lord just told us don't go into 2000 with debt. We'll pay all of that off. We'll be debt free by December. And, and, and our little church is, 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 we're going to be like this someday. I told Bishop, we're going, we going to do this. And, and I'm serious. And we'll have our staff down here to sit, to learn, to see, to ask questions. This is absolutely fabulous. But we don't want to get caught up in the aesthetics. They're necessary, but we want to remember how it happened. And I don't let anybody forget at Perfecting when we were in a hotel room that sat 35 people and only had 13. And you can't forget that. When we were sitting in a church and it was so hot, it looked like you could have boiled an egg on 
the seat because we didn't have air conditioning because it cost like 52000 to put air conditioning in and we wasn't spending it like that back then. So we just fanned, shouted, sweated, had to buy new clothes. I won't let anybody forget that. Just because we got air, see 2,000 people, got a gymnasium, a sauna, whirlpool, uh, locker rooms, the regulation gym, just all that kind of stuff, two racquetball courts in the church. We're not going to forget how it happened. So we're not going to come and sit on our padded pews and fold our legs and act like we don't have good sense. Because it's a miracle. I need somebody to know how to appreciate miracles to appreciate them right now. 